Um, well, we noticed with Lark that um, about at six months, that at that at that point she was not holding her bottle like she should. She was not sitting up like she should. Um, she was not rolling over like she should, and that started to concern me, and it started to concern Angela. So basically, I took Lark uh, by myself to the developmental pediatrician. The doctor came in and she explained to me that Lark has cerebral palsy. Um, it, was, uh, it was hard. It was hard because uh, I realized that with that news that my, my daughter would not be able to have a, a life of, of running around, playing, jumping up in my arms, just like I had with my son. Literally, she would just be sitting there in a room and, you know, not a whole lot of interaction, just kind of there, you know. And uh, I would just, you know, I would just kind of look in her eyes and be like, you know, what are you thinking, Lark? You know, what are you, what are you thinking? But um, it, was, it was just hard. And it's, we would go to different family functions and the other kids would be playing and she couldn't play, you know. When Chloe was born, she was three months premature. She was one pound, 13 ounces. She got an infection when she was just two and a half weeks old. They had to give her over 100% oxygen to keep her alive, and that was the cause of her blindness. They called us July 4th morning, and they said, your daughter is very sick. And they said, well, we think that she's contracted E. coli. And uh, I said, well, what's the worst that could happen? And they said, well, we could lose her. Um, but we're doing what we can. Y'all need to get up here. So we took the whole family up to the hospital. And we had her baptized. And up to this point, she was just a few weeks old, um, she had not opened her eyes, not once. When the pastor put the cross of water on her forehead, she opened her eyes. So we knew that we had a pretty good chance. She had IVs in every limb on her body. She didn't even look like a baby anymore. Finally, when she was two and a half months old, they let me hold her and feed her. <laughs> the first time I held her, <laughs> she just felt like a pile of blankets. She was so light. She was only two and a half pounds. The things that he did when he was a baby seemed to be right on schedule um, until we reached about two and I noticed that he wasn't speaking so at that time we took him to the pediatrician and he was diagnosed with autism. It was very devastating in the beginning. There was a lot of um, a lot of blame, embarrassment, going out to McDonald's and uh, people staring at you because maybe he was doing something that the other kids weren't doing. Not only was he diagnosed at three with two with autism, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I remember um, thinking that's it, that it's, it's over. Here's an eight-year-old boy that's being stuck with needles and chemo, knowing that it's gonna make him sick. And him being in the bathtub and saying, I'm gonna be okay, right? I'm gonna be okay. I said, you're gonna be okay. And he has come 
a long, long, long way. We were at a baseball game, one of Hunter's games, and there was a, a lady there, I'd never met her, and she noticed Lark. She could tell that Lark had, had special needs. And she told us about Sire. The very first lesson that she had with Sire, instantly, you know, her face lit up. And <laughs> she and she was happy and by the second or third lesson or session, she was elated. Now Lark can walk by herself, um, climb the stairs. We found out about Sire through the therapists that were visiting our house. Sire gives her a sense of accomplishment and pride that doesn't come easy for somebody that's blind. Most of her trophies come from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. The first year she was there was 2006 and she got four trophies all at one time. This year she got two trophies. One was for barrels and the other one was for English equitation. The first day I think he was a little uneasy. He he didn't really want to ride. Um, he, are we done yet? You know, every three minutes, are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Because anybody that has autistic kids knows, you know, their structure. And so the first, you know, the first day, you know, was was not was not was not that great, you know. And then you know the next week, you know, we got just a just a little bit better. And then the next week and. Over time, he just really seemed to to bond with the horse and the horse with him. It's almost as if they were talking to each other, but with unspoken words. His fine motor skills, when he first started riding, the reins would just they would just hang. And now he knows. He knows to pull to the right or pull to the left or pull back. And it's, it's the small things, you know, that we, we take for granted, but that program is the, it to me, is the start of something much bigger in his life. They're the ones that, that probably are thinking in their heads, you know, what, what's wrong with the world? Why, why are things happening like this? Why does it have to be like this?